Hello, my name is Daryl. Welcome to Training for Work Management Enhancements in Oracle Work and Asset Cloud Service. In this session we talk about auto-creating timesheets from employee record configurations in work management. For the capabilities covered in this training, we'll give an overview, followed by more detail to explain how you can use them and what business value they bring. Then we'll walk you through a demonstration. Next, we'll explain what you need to consider before enabling these features in your business and what you need to know to set them up. This capability will provide you with the ability to automatically create employee timesheets by way of configurations on the employee portal. The feature allows for timesheet creation to be skipped on non-working days and for individual timesheet detail records to be created by a specified date range. The benefits of being able to automatically create timesheet records based on configurations on the employee portal is that time spent manually creating timesheet detail records for repetitive activities is greatly reduced. The accuracy of those records is improved and the timeliness of time reporting is increased. This demonstration shows you how you can use the auto creation of timesheets from employee configurations to enhance your business. We'll start the demonstration with me already logged in and on my home page. First we'll go and take a look at the work calendar. Here we have mocked up a work calendar for the United States. The work calendar shows the days of the week that the employee normally works. In this case it's Monday to Friday with Saturdays and Sundays off. I'll scroll down to show you the holiday section. So here we have a full year of holidays right from New Year's Day through to Christmas. Let's navigate forward to the employee record. And here we have my employee record. It's got my name, my supervisor's name, business unit, and phone numbers. And here we have some HR data and my office address. And I'll scroll down to show you some more fields. And here's my service area that I normally work, my hire date, my employee numbers, and the courses that I've taken. And this zone shows any assets that have been assigned to me. And here we would see any cruise shifts that I've been assigned. Let's move on to the new Timesheet Schedule tab. I'll show you this functionality in edit mode so you can see how the various fields work. This field is basically the off-on switch for the timesheet creation process. And here we see the various work calendars that have been created. I can deselect the work calendar by just clicking on the blank field. But in this case, I'm going to stick with the U.S. work calendar. And here are the start and end dates for the auto timesheet creation process. Let's add a row so I can show you how these fields work. I accomplish that by clicking on the plus sign. I'll enter a sequence number. Note that the craft field defaulted for my employee record, but I can select any craft as I can on the timesheet detail. So I'll enter the hours for this line. Note that the charge type is defaulted to activity at regular hours. Let's go populate the activity. I could go searching for the activity, but I'll show you a better way. Let's assume that you know what the work order number is. In this case, I'll just go and copy this one. So now instead of searching for the activity, let's just paste in the work order number. You could have typed it out as well. So with the work order number populated, let's just hit enter. So automatically a search is invoked for activities with that work order number. And now I can just select whichever activity I want to charge to. If that work order only had one activity, it would have just defaulted in the field. You wouldn't have to select it. As mentioned previously, this is defaulted to regular time, but if it's actually overtime, I can just select that from the drop-down. 
And now that I've selected overtime, the overtime type dropdown has become available. I'll select the appropriate overtime type. Let's take a look at the available charge types. We have activity, cost center. We have leave, which would be an external charge like jury duty or vacation. We can select a project or work function, which would be an internal charge like safety meeting, confined space training, that kind of thing. It's, these are the same charge types that are available in the timesheet detail. And you can see that the various charge types are in separate columns. We've seen activity. Here's the cost center. And leave. Work function. And project. We can select the appropriate cruise ship type. And labor earning type. And now I can select the days of the week that this timesheet detail record should be created for. I could select Saturday and Sunday as this line item is indicated. But remember I've got work calendar populated and that work calendar has me not working Saturdays and Sundays. So the timesheet line item would not be created because I have the work calendar populated. Note the work calendar start and end dates. That's January 10th to February 6th. But here I can override these dates, so they would only be created from January 10th to the 15th, not after the 15th. Now I'll scroll down and I'll save the record. Here we can see what the various fields look like on an existing record. This column is an important part of the process. Notice that the last processing date for this row is January 14th. That's because it ended on the 13th and when batch ran on the 14th, it said, oh, I'm not creating this row anymore, so it's not going to be there for the 15th and onward. So the last processing date would get updated every day as the batch runs. So when the batch runs on January the 16th, it'll hit this row and see that it's already hit the end date, so it'll update to the 16th and that row won't get updated any further. And you see this row doesn't have a last processing date, so that'll get updated when it runs after midnight on the 16th and onward. So let's go and run the employee batch. This is the ID of the user running the batch. The language is defaulted to English. If you put your email address in this field, you're going to get an email every time this batch is run. You might not want that, and I've got a parameter to show you a little bit later where you can control that. This defaults to the current date and time, but you can put a future date and time that you want this batch to run instead. If the batch was designed for this parameter, you could put error in here if you only wanted to get an email when there was an error on the batch, not within the data in the batch, but the batch itself. Or you could set this to all so you would get an email every time the batch ran. If this was an existing batch job submission, I could just click on this duplicate in queue and it would run the batch again. But as this is a new record, I'll just click on Save. I'll expand my dashboard and I can see that this batch is in progress. And I'll just click on Refresh to see the new status. I've clicked on Refresh a couple of times and I can see the batch is now complete. Let's scroll over and make sure there was no errors. No errors encountered. Let's go back to the employee record and see how our timesheet generation 
worked out. So I scrolled all the way over to the right and I can see the last processing data has been updated on all but two of the records because they overrode the dates that are on the timesheet schedule tab header. What about does it for this demonstration? Let's go back and look at some implementation advice. In this section we provide implementation considerations and setup instructions for the enhancements covered. Auto create timesheets from employee record configurations. The customer must take action before use by end users and will have a small scale impact on your current business processes, has optional actions that need to be taken to use, can be accessed using admin rights on the employee portal, the business process associated with this feature is time reporting. Before commencing enablement for auto create timesheets from employee record configurations, there are implementation considerations that need to be taken into account. Does the employee have repetitive tasks where time needs to be reported, which impacts whether this new functionality is appropriate? And does the employee adhere to a specific work calendar with respect to working days and statutory holidays, which determines whether the work calendar is needed? The enablement for auto-create timesheets from employee record configurations is achieved by creating appropriate work calendars, creating appropriate chargeable records, populating the timesheet schedule tab on the employee portal and scheduling the employee MO periodic monitor process batch to run daily just after midnight. As mentioned on the previous slide, a work calendar might be required if the employee has consistent working days and statutory holidays. Timesheet records will not be created no matter what date range is specified on the header or timesheet information zone of the timesheet schedule tab on the employee portal. Conversely, if the employee does not have consistent working days or needs to create timesheet detail records for statutory holidays, the work calendar field on the timesheet schedule tab on the employee portal should not be populated. To take full advantage of this new functionality, a best practice would be to potentially have multiple work calendars to support a scenario where different employees might have different working days or different statutory holidays, possibly depending on unit agreements or location. Do not populate the work calendar for employees that have varied days of the week off or are required to submit a timesheet for statutory holidays. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for listening. You can easily pause and rewind any of these slides if you require additional time to take in the detail.